almost live. I think we're live. We might be live. I'm going to say we're here. And hello, Vanessa. <laughs> oh, hello, Vanessa. <laughs> I'm live uh, with you. So, I mean, yeah, we're live. We're live. I never know, just so you guys know that are tuning in right now. The, the first like 10 seconds of these videos, I never know when it goes live because the, the Zoom to YouTube has this bar and it goes like this. It goes like, Gee. but apparently at some point in the bar process, it goes live, but I don't see it. So <laughs> yeah, well, I think you told me like the first time we did this, we both just sort of sat here in silence for yeah. a long time because we didn't yeah. know. We're just sort it, of sitting, enjoying each other's company, but quietly, silently. Exactly. We might have sat in silence today, too. Did we sit in silence again today, guys, that are here? Hi, hi everybody. Good to see you all here. Um, uh, it, it, happy Wine Wednesday uh, from a lot of people here saying Happy Wine Wednesday. We love it. Uh, so, yeah, we did sit. We did sit in a little, a little silence, by the way. Okay, just a little though. All right, I'm okay, okay with that. A little, a little. Yeah. It's just good just to be quiet, just take it all in, take a moment. <laughs> yeah, um, well, this is this is great. Um, Vanessa and I are back and I see a lot of you guys are back. You know, it's actually like, Vanessa, you know, it's actually been really cool. We've got this like little wine community that's Ooh. sort of developed here where like all of them are now like they know each other. So oh, I love that. That's so neat. Because and you know, that is what wine is meant to do, right? Yeah. Is connect people. So I love yeah. I love hearing that. Yeah, it's really cool because in the comments here, you know, like you know, we got people saying hello to each other. You know, they're saying hi to us, but like I I, I see, you know, everyone. We're just the back, we're just the background. Yeah. And, yeah. At this point, yeah. So um, we're just talking to each other. No one pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's fine. I love talking with you. It's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. Um, all right, cool. So, um, so hi. We're we're we're, hi. we're we're talking some some viticulture. Yeah. And then, and then we're gonna just open it up to you guys um, because uh, we're just doing one. We're just doing one wine That's today. Fine. So. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a, a powerful wine. Yes. Yeah. So this is the Martin Ray uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from Santa Cruz Mountains. This is, is 2017. Martin Ray was like really kind of like a pioneer. You know what's cool about wine is like the, these name, a lot of these names on the bottles, like they're pe they're actual people. They're like family names. And, you know, um, so anyway, this person, Martin Ray was kind of this like pioneering guy in this region of Santa Cruz. Um, and then for some other like very famous wineries that have popped up there in the meantime, not popped up, they've been there for a while, but like Ridge. Um, so, but he was kind of one of the first. And and as you said, I, I thought, you know, we have one wine today, um, but kind of the way that the vineyard is situated is interesting. And I was thinking, you know, it might be fun to go through some stuff about viticulture. And, you know, viticulture is a fancy, scary sounding word, but it's really just about, you know, the, the, growing, of, the growing of grapes, you know? Um, but there are different considerations and things that happen um, in terms of agriculture when we're growing um, grapes for wine versus other things that, you know, obviously like, you know me by now, I'm like fairly, I'm pretty large on the dork scale for, for wine stuff, but I think it's fascinating. So maybe I'll just be talking to myself, but I thought I would, I thought I would share some stuff and then we can. Yeah, let's, let's do it. You know what? There's a lot of people here that find it fascinating too. I, I think, or, or, you know, yeah. Good. well, we'll have a chat then, but, but first cheers and thank you for having me. This is really just, I just look forward to this time so much. So. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so thank me you. Too. Me too. Hmm. So this is Cabernet. So. We've had a couple on the um, on these wine Wednesdays, but this is really um, Cabernet can be very expensive. Um, you know, particularly particularly when you're in Napa, um, can run a pretty hefty price tag. But this is not from Napa. This is from a little further south. But it's you know it's a thirty five dollar 
wine, which for, you know, is not, you know, entry level by any means, but for a Cabernet Sauvignon with the pedigree of this kind of, 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 of person behind it, I think that's, I think it's kind of a steal. Yeah, that's, that's what is insane to me about this. 35 bucks cab, and I will taste it now and see. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's pretty tasty. I like it. Oh. It's good, right? For like, oh. it packs a lot of punch for like a $35 wine. I feel like it drinks much more expensively than that. You know, it definitely you can taste some sort of, you can really get the French oak on this. Do you get that yeah. kind of toasty, like yeah. toasty uh, baking spice note um, from the oak, which, you know, oak is not cheap, um, particularly new oak, which is what we're experiencing on this wine. So um, I'm, I'm new, enjoying it. I'm enjoying yeah. it. New oak. Okay. Yes. So, um, cause what is that? So new yeah. oak compared to like what? So we'll call it like, we call it like, you know, new and used is basically is, is as fancy as you have to get. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but essentially, you know, oak is a very, you can age wine in any number of types of vessels. You could age it in stainless steel. You could do it in an amphora, which people do, you know, you could, do it. There are different types of, of, of wood. Acacia is sometimes used, but, um, but oak, um, and there's American oak, there's French oak, there's actually oak from Hungary, um, you know, that is used from, from, and, and from other countries as well, but sort of the most, the most famous is French oak and American oak, I would say, you know, um, and the reason why it's great for aging wines is it just well it just tastes good frankly <laughs> it goes well it, it goes well with wine but it has the right type of grain so wow you know oxygen is a foe to wine in in anything other than sort of small doses but the grains of oak are, are they're they're tight enough that you get the right amount of oxygen exchange that actually can have a beneficial impact on the wine uh in terms of texture so the thing about oak is it can have it can have um, sensory impact in terms of like this your the aromas and the flavors, but it also has a textural component. So when I taste a wine with oak, if I'm blind tasting, like when I when I took the master wine exam, I would have to taste a wine, and then not only describe like you know what it was, where it was from, how much I thought it cost, you know all that kind of stuff, but um, but I had to t figure out just by tasting it how it was made. Oh my gosh. And, and one of the clues for me though, um, was the texture and I'll get back to that one second, but why that's important is because when we talk about new oak, so new oak means it's being used for the first time. So when oak barrels are made, you know, the, the oak is harvested, um, and it's kind of, they, they make it over this, um, like fire basically, which makes it soft and pliable. So you can bend the staves into, mm -hmm. into the shape that you want of the barrel. Okay. Um, and part of that process when there, there's literally fire shooting up in this barrel, uh, is, is what we call the toast level. So how lightly or heavily that toast is done will impact how strong those sort of, sometimes you get these like smoky flavors, toasty, yeah. um, that, that is determined then. Um, and then oak itself just has, you know, like French oak tends to have this sort of more like sweet spice note to it, um, America wow. can have some sort of more like dill coconut. Um, but the longer you can use a wine, you can use a barrel over and over again for many, many vintages, right. basically until it, you know, starts leaking, you know, um, but you won't have that sensory experience of those aromas and flavors the longer that you use it. So when we say new, we mean this barrel is being used for the first time. This First instant, time. which will have right. the largest impact on the wine. Now you can use that again the next year and it will have a little bit of that impact. And then you could use it a third year and it'll have even less. And then basically less and less and less and less the longer you use them. And some people, some winemakers, depending on the style, they don't want a lot of oak. So some people specifically only buy barrels that someone else has already used. Sure. They, they don't want the, the scent, this, the aromas and the flavors of the oak, but they want the texture. So all of that is to say, when I was blind tasting, sometimes I would have to try to figure out if a wine was aged in oak, but without having any aromas or flavors of it, but I would pay attention to the texture. 
So that, that little bit of um, oxygen exchange, it, it can soften the wine in a way that feels different. Um, so, you know, I, I, a lot of blind tasting for me was, a, I call it like palate shape. So it's more about um, it, how it feels in terms of structure, m more even in some cases than what I'm actually tasting. So I would pay attention, mm -hmm. does it feel kind of linear on the palate or does it have this, the word I like to use is breadth. Like, does it kind of have this breadth of palate or like roundness? And okay. that would be a way that I would decipher whether it was Asian oak. Okay. And that's my very long answer. So and, question I don't think you actually asked. <laughs> that is good. And it's French. And, and this, this one is French oak? Yes. Yes. Okay. You're like, yup, that's French oak. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I think this is tasting really good. I like this one a lot. Um, yes, I would uh, definitely like uh, some steak. Um, this is, yeah, cab. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, speaking of, I really enjoyed our pairings last week. Mm -hmm. I ate everything after we were finished. It was all I could do not to just eat it all while we were live. But Well, your food looked so good last <laughs> week. I definitely paired more of the cheese with, with the other... Oh, wines th throughout the last week that I had some. So good. Yeah. Cool. So good. I, I mean, yeah. That so was fun. So, so I wanted to, if you're still game, talk a little yeah. bit about like this vineyard because I think it it's um, it's a it's a high elevation, and it's also a, a hillside vineyard. Um, but many many, there are many vineyards that are either high elevation or hillside. Or both mm -hmm. and so i thought it might be fun to like talk about why that matters like and why we should care why should we care this yeah. is this is a good... <laughs> okay we have, we, we have a we have a saying um well it actually started in the in my my mw my master of wine study group when we were studying theory but i've sort of taken it and applied it to my work at wine access too where when we talk about things like we say so what so it's like, you can be like, this vineyard is high elevation and hillside. Well, so what, right? No. So like, so I like to do the like, what is that? Why does it matter? Okay. You know, why should, why yeah. should we care, right? You, so, you, you just, so what, Vanessa? So what, I'm gonna, I will tell you, I will tell you. Okay, <laughs> so, so there's, there's um, a couple things that are interesting to talk about in terms of where vineyards are. So. One is altitude. So if you think about literally, um, and you've been to Napa, I don't know if you've been to like, you know, Howl Mountain or something. And, and, and sometimes these, you know, these vineyards are at, you know, 1400 feet, 1600 feet. Um, right. In some places in Argentina, it's like, you know, thousands, it's even higher. Um, uh, so it, it, the, if you think about it, the, the vineyard is literally closer to the sunlight, right? Yep. So, but you can also get a cooling effect from altitude. And again, like, so what, right? But the point is it all relates to balance in the ripeness. So just to say, oh, this is gonna get more access to sunlight. Well, if it just had more sunlight, the grapes might just get really super ripe. Maybe when you harvest them, the acidity would be low because it didn't have the balance. But the thing about the cooling influence, in addition to having good ripeness, is you get both. So, you know, when, when winemakers are, you know, viticulturalists or growers, when they're determining when to pick, the pick date is so important. Right. Um, they'll, you know, they're looking for this balance of ripeness and acidity because, you know, acidity is that, it's that freshness. It, it's what wakes up your palate and makes wines great to pair with food. And so, you know, you wait too long, you can have a lot of sugar in the grape, but the acidity will be low and then it's not going to be in balance. And it all starts in the vineyard. Um, so if you, you know, I used to work um, at, 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 at wineries here in Napa. And I remember, you know, at harvest, you would just see the, the winemakers or the growers. I mean, just walking, like just tasting, you know, grapes all the time. I mean, it's wine has also become, including harvest date has become very scientific. So you can pick it, you can, you know, analyze things for the sugar level and the acid number and all that in the lab. But so much of it is also about the tasting of it. And so, you know, what they were really looking for is like, you know, what's the ripeness they would feel like, you know, this sounds a little gross, but they kind of like, like, like 
crunch on the on the seeds and see like are they crunchy are they green you know um how does the skin of the grape does it feel you know does it have a good texture to it in addition to in addition to the ripeness of the actual you know flesh of of the fruit um they're crunching on the grapes and wow so they're literally like assessing by the crunchiness so so you know again it can be so scientific you can put this and analyze in the lab but sometimes they're just like where are these still greens? Do they taste kind of green? Or are they tasting like, you know, like it's, it's at a good ripeness level and, and ready to pick? So amazing. Okay. anyway, that's, it starts in the vineyard, which goes back to my original point, which was balance, right? So, so these high elevation vineyards can often provide that, that, that perfect balance of, of ripeness and acidity. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing about um, this vineyard is it's on a hillside. So hillsides, I think, are fascinating. I don't, I don't know why. I just get really like fixated on certain things, and I just think the hillside vineyards are really cool. So again, like, why does it, why does it matter, right? Like, so what? So what? Um, so a couple different reasons. Um, so on a hillside, you can, and this is, this is, this is the thing about growing and winemaking is I'm not saying one is better than the other. There are right. beautiful floors that are on the valley floor, but since we're talking about a hillside vineyard why it matters is um, hillsides have good drainage. So I think we talked about on, a, on an earlier Wine Wednesday about um, how Cabernet Sauvignon in particular, you know, winemakers will say, oh, it's, it's a grape that doesn't like to have its feet wet. Right? Oh, yeah. so it does better when it's grown, uh, when it has good drainage. Um, the other thing is, and this is what's like so counterintuitive about growing sometimes, is that vines that have to struggle a little bit actually perform better. So if they can have higher quality and, and be more resilient. Um, and so hillside vineyards often have, they don't have super lush, rich soils. Because if you think about a hillside and erosion, they have mm-hmm. kind of poor soils. And again, it's so weird. You're like, why would you want that? But you know, the, for the vine, if it has to struggle a little bit, it's gonna focus on fruit production, a couple reasons. Fruit production instead of the foliage or what we call the canopy, right? Because if you think about it, grapes, are, it's reproduction for the for the vines, you know? Yeah. They'll, they'll focus on, it's like survival, right? So I'm gonna focus on producing fruit instead of this big lush canopy. Um, the other thing those poor soils do is they make the vines have to kind of struggle to, to put their roots very deep mm-hmm. to access water. Um, and, and again, because they have to struggle a little bit, it actually makes them more resilient. Cause if you think about it, if the roots are all kind of up at the surface, right, they're not, it, 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 the vine kind of isn't as strong as if it really has to struggle, it digs very deep. It's really tapped in, um, to, to the water source. That's, that's, that's deeper. This is so cool. So the vines, we could really have a good metaphor here mm-hmm. for something. But these vines being so resilient, I mean, this is yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's that that little bit of struggle or that little, you know, that you have to that fight that you have to put in. It actually, you know, makes makes you stronger. Yeah, this is and amazing. Christina Aguilera wrote a song about it. I don't know. Um, Christina Aguilera <laughs> reference. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> we have. Is, are you talking about fighter? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for making me fighter. That's it. Maybe work a little bit faster. Yeah. Maybe a little bit there. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the song. That's it. So <laughs> where are my Christina fans in the I know oh, okay, yeah, they're okay, we're good. <laughs> so those are and those are just a couple reasons. There are more. <laughs> but I just love I'm just thinking about I'm thinking about, yes, 90s for the win, that's right. Um, <laughs> um, I'm thinking about the, the it's like I have an image in my head of, of these like vines, like, yeah, no, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> got, yep. got this, got this. Yep, Jay wow. Brown, tell those vines they have to dig a little deeper, <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. So- yeah. yeah. And, and in terms of the hillside too, um, uh, often the, the hillsides that are planted that, that are, people choose to plant have a good, what we call aspect. 
So aspect is the relation of the vineyard towards the sun. It could be morning sun, it could be evening sun. Again, it depends on which direction it's facing. Um, but there often can be sort of act almost like little sun traps or capture just the right amount of sunlight, you know, where mm -hmm. you're getting kind of morning light, you're getting evening light, but you're not getting the very direct, let's say if I was a valley floor vineyard, sort of direct full daylight sunshine. So it can often, again, neither is better. They're just different, you know, valley floor versus hillside. But that's why sometimes the hillsides can have this like beautiful balance of, of, of acid. Um, and so it sounds like sounds like if you were growing some grapes and if you were growing, yeah, you'd you'd go you'd do it on the hillside. Yeah, yeah. There and you know, there's actually another reason. Um and matters like here in Napa, um, for instance, is um so frost can be an issue in vineyards. Ooh. So frost can be very damaging, uh, especially to sort of you know, younger vines or when the fruit is just beginning to set, you know, earlier in harvest, so like springtime, it can, it can be, it can be quite bad. Um, it can just, it can wipe out, you know, a whole harvest essentially. Um, so uh -huh. frost is heavier than air. So if you think about a hillside, if we're having a frost, it actually will sort of roll down the hill because uh, it's heavier than the rest of the air, right? And kind of settle in the valley floor in these like in more in the pockets and so what you'll and you again you've been to you've been to napa you've probably seen these but they're actually um in the valley floor vineyards you'll see different types of like wind machines that are there to sort of keep the frost from settling because they'll but you don't see those on the hillside because you don't need them ah, right the uh -huh. frost will just fall down but then you don't want this frost pooling in your vineyard so there are these things that kind of the they're called turbines I don't know if you've seen them in the middle, but they're like these huge yeah. fans. Um, sometimes, so they're like up on a, they look like a lollipop. And then there are some that are kind of sit on the ground um, that are shaped like a barrel kind of, but basically you're, they'll, the, the vendors, they'll turn it on when there's a frost to keep it from, to, to keep it in the air, to keep it from settling. But that's right. why, um, you know, living in Napa, um, it's very, it's like a very uh, romantic idea to live on a, near a vineyard, but, it, it can actually like you can really disrupt your sleep because when they turn those turbines on during like in, in Napa, you, that is so loud. It's really? so loud. Yes, it's you. It sounds like you know a helicopter basically landing. So, oh, yeah. Okay, this is good to know. And Come there's back. actually stories. Speaking of helicopters, of people who have flown a helicopter around who didn't have a wind machine, who didn't have a turbine, and like literally like flew their helicopter around <laughs> to keep the frost from settling. That's okay. a true story. Super casual. I'm just going to fly my helicopter around, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it happened. It happened. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but so one more just sort of interesting fun fact about hillsides is that um, if we're looking, for instance, I'll just, again, I'll use Napa as, a, as an example, because I'm in Napa, I'm sitting in Napa Valley right now. Um, Jealous. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty beautiful. It was really nice today. Um, <laughs> is hillsides are very um, hard to come by because they're very, um, I mean, we have a lot of laws here about, um, about expansion into vineyards we call the agricultural preserve. Um, which was put into place to kind of keep Napa, you know, a beautiful, pristine region without getting overdeveloped. But it means that you can't just keep developing vineyards. You know, you have, um, they're, they're, it's protected. Um, so it's very, they're very hard to come by. Um, but also there are laws about, um, <laughs> we've talked about laws before. We did, we did talk about the laws. Oh yeah. It, it, they can be much more expensive um, because first of all, just to, I think it's over even just like a 5% grade, I think. Um, you have to get all these like special permits from the county and put an erosion plan and you're, you're um, limited in terms of like how much you can pull out in terms of trees and stuff because, I mean, it's important. There actually was a story, very, I won't name his name, but there's a very famous grower in Napa who got in trouble. I think this was in like 1980 one or something like that um but basically like like was developing a hillside vineyard near saint helena 
and mm -hmm. had not put in like enough erosion planning and was just clearing a bunch of trees and basically like it caused this like landslide into the St. Oh. Helena drinking water. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It was kind of scandal. This is this is a wine scandal. This is the kind of, kind of this would have been on like, you know, the front page of uh, Us Weekly. Yeah, Us Weekly. In the wine world. <laughs> yeah, that is scandalous. Yeah. So anyway, they're, they can be very, very expensive and they're much more expensive to hillside vineyards to develop as well. Because if you think about planting everything on a grade, you know, there's a lot more considerations and a lot of things, depending on how steep it is, has to be done by hand because you can't, you know, you can't drive a tractor on a 40 degree slope. It's going to roll down the hill, you know, so. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Did, 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 did he get in trouble? Uh, he did get in trouble. Yeah. I think he got, he got fined and then additional laws were put into place after that about, about hillside development. Okay. Yeah. Yes, he did get in trouble. He could just got, he got a little slap on the wrist though. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to ask who it is, but I'm already out of this. What, what, what? You can probably Google it. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I really like this, by the way. Yeah. Isn't it good? This is I'm gone. really enjoying it too. I'm really oh. It. oh, wait, I got another, wait a minute. Mm. This is, this, this, here's the, the, uh, another 90s, uh, oh. here's another 90s, um, you know. Fighter song? <laughs> yeah, another okay. 90s fighter song. Um, how about, uh, stronger than yesterday, now it's nothing but my way. Yeah. My Loneliness ain't killing me no more. Who knows this? Now I know. I'm it. stronger. <laughs> it's Brittany. I knew that. It's Brittany. Yeah. It's Brittany. Yeah. yeah it's Brittany. Yeah. Stronger. So we, we did fighter and stronger tonight. This is good. I like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we should always we should always um, pair our our wines with with a particular decade. That would be fun. That could be a lot of fun, actually. Mm -hmm. Which wines go with which, like pop star? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, um. Um. Oh, this is uh, Zara. Sorry. Yes. Here's the bottle again. In case you Zara wanted to see the bottle, it's Martin Ray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Martin. Yeah. Tasty, tasty. What are, what, so what are you pairing this with, did you say, later? Do you have an idea? Um, actually, it's, it, it, it's uh, actually, it's going to be taco uh, night here, so. Got it. Fine, yeah. taco. Is your mom on? I didn't hear if your mom was on. My mom is there. <gasps> Hello, mom. Hi. Um, mom says hi. Mom, mom texted me too. It yeah. wouldn't be the same without her. No, no. Mom's here. Um, so I'm going to look at the uh, questions that I've got in the chat here. Okay. I have lots of other fun facts I can roll with too, if you'd like. Let's roll with that. Let, just, I can, I can let, me, let, me get, let me just say thank you, Kira. Um, see, Kira's here. It doesn't, it doesn't even drink alcohol, but loves Wine Wednesday. That's fun. I love that. It's just interesting. It's cool. Yeah. Justin, hey, what's up? Um, what wine goes well with Hamilton on Disney Plus on Friday? Oh. <gasps> I'm so excited. Oh, my God. I am, like, beyond. Every time I see the little teaser, I get goosebumps. Yeah. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. And I was, I'm so bummed because oh. I found out that a friend of mine's partner was the stage manager on the Broadway and I was like oh my gosh I have an in and then <laughs> okay but you get to see it on Friday and 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 then I your life wait. will change I can't wait yeah your life will change so what wine pairs well with Hamilton um <laughs> it's gotta be a really a really complex one uh <laughs> Madeira they drink a lot of Madeira which is a fortified wine. Um, Madeira. What else would pair with that? Like, like Virginia? Virginia, or actually, you know what? B French wine as well, because Thomas Jefferson went to France. Yes. And drank yes. a ton of French wine. He loved Bordeaux. 
Yeah. Um, I think he loved so turn also. That makes sense. Wrote about it. Um, I know he wrote about Chat. Well, this would be a very expensive pairing, but um, Chateau Latour, which will okay. it's gonna run you, yeah, you know, like probably a thousand bucks. So <laughs> I'm probably not drinking that, but um, <laughs> yeah. Thomas Jefferson was doing fine with that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It, well, it wasn't that expensive in those days. Right. You know. I wonder how much it was back then. Hmm. Oh, that would be interesting. I don't, right? It would be really good to know. But yes, Hamilton Friday in your so life. So there. So yeah. there. So, so excited. excited. I'm so yeah. excited. So thank yeah. you, Justin, for, for mentioning that. Justin's been mentioning that all the time, by the way. So like, yeah. I think, Justin, you mentioned that to me like the moment it was announced. <laughs> it's great. Wait a minute, Jay. Oh, hold on here. Jay Brown says they toasted. They toasted Madeira at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. There you go. Madeira Sorry. is so it's a it's a it's a fortified wine as I mentioned, meaning spirit was added, right. um, and it's like one of those wines. It's a type of wine that all you literally almost can't ruin. Like it, it, you know, we were talking about, we've talked before about like storage, proper storage and temperature and, you know, you want to keep it from oxygen. It's basically been like so beaten up already that like you right. could like, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but just a little bit, you could like leave it on your radiator for like a couple years and come back and it would be like, I'm cool, fine. Yeah. Cause it's actually like part of the process, part of the aging process is it's already exposed to oxygen and it's already exposed to heat. Wow. Okay. So, so it's really it's a it's a it's an amazing wine. Um, okay. Madeira. Madeira. And it also has like screeching high acidity. It's real. It's it's a fascinating. It's a really fascinating type of wine. No, I haven't had it in so long. I'm so glad we just talked about this. This makes me realize I need to I need to go back and taste some Madeira. Maybe. Yes, and I think that was I think that was Thomas Jefferson's favorite. I'm pretty sure Madeira. Okay. Anyway. De de well, there you go. Madeira, Declaration of Independence, and 4th of July this weekend. So, I mean, yeah. this is good. Yeah. This is great. Okay. We love it. Um, uh, go back to... Um, <laughs> wait. Do you want to go back to mm, viticulture or, or questions yeah. or what? Well, I thought it might be a little bit of fun to talk about um, like planting a vineyard and what goes into that because it's a little different than... Planting other and sort of vineyard what we call vineyard management um planting vineyard management okay awesome let's talk about that and if you guys i know there were questions that popped up in the chat if you ask a question can you just type it again so i can see them um and i can just have them all in one little spot and i can get back to them after we talk about okay cool um so what i wanted to um to explain for you know for anyone who hasn't uh, visited a wine region or been able to have these conversations before um is that um so vineyards are not planted from seeds so um if you see you know if you see a vineyard and they're sort of beautifully manicured and in these perfect rows um so so the way that 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 vines are planted is they already have what we call the root stock and, and the vine, right, that, that's planted and very specifically where they want it. Um, and I'll go back to, to sort of um, the vine in just a second. But basically, you know, the consideration is, um, and this is modern viticulture, right? Like mm -hmm. centuries and centuries ago, you know, anything goes, right? But, but basically, like modern viticulture is what you want to pay attention to is the spacing of the vines, meaning how far apart they are from one another. A couple reasons for that. One is um, that canopy that I mentioned. So the canopy is what we call the, it's the foliage basically right. of the vine. But like if they're crowded too close together, you can have too much shading on each other. So, and, and it kind of depends on the region. It depends on the climate. Um, uh, some really all of these decisions are based on where you are, but the spacing can be for that. Spacing is also can be important um, in terms of how vigorously or not vigorously the vine grows. 
So if you think about vines that are planted very close together, they're going to have to struggle for the same water resources and nutrients than if they were further, further apart. Now that doesn't mean that it's always better to plant them further apart. In some regions or in some vineyards, they specifically plant them closer together. Um, and that's because um, vigor on a vine is something that is managed very carefully. So I think we, we, I think I used this analogy once before where like, it seems weird. You'd be like, why don't you just want to give it all the nutrients at once and put a bunch of water down and just let it, you know, but it's not for, for the, for growing quality grapes. It goes back to that struggle we were talking about. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and if a vine is too, what we call vigorous, vigor means it's kind of, it's either, you know, it's, it's growing too much. So there's too much foliage. It can cause shading. It can mm -hmm. cause the vine to focus on the foliage instead of on the clusters. Um, and if it produces too many clusters, it can actually sort of dilute the quality. You know, when they have to focus on a smaller amount, you can have more concentration, density, you know, depth of flavors than if the, you just let the vine go crazy and just grow as, grow as much as it wants. So, so to go back to planting, so they're, they're very specifically placed. Um, and, and again, in some regions, there's actually laws about how many vines you can have, you know, per acre or per hectare. So it can be further complicated um, by that. But essentially, most vines these days are planted onto what we call graft, are grafted onto a rootstock. So bear with me for just a second. So if you think about, so there are, there are a couple, um, pests and diseases in vineyards that can be very detrimental to vines, like that can kill vines or, you know, cause the production to go down or not taste good. Or, um, so basically, you know, there was, um, there's one in particular, particular a, a, a pest called phylloxera, which almost destroyed wine production completely. Uh, until we understood it. So basically it would, it would eat on the, the roots of, 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 of uh, wine grapes of vinifera and and the vines would die. Um, oh. What what ha was developed as a result of that the sort of happy that the outcome was that um, it was figured out that certain types of rootstocks are re resilient to that. And strangely enough, so there's there's different. Um, so when we talk about table grapes and wine grapes, they're they're different, right? So there's uh, Vitis labrusca, which is um, uh, table grapes, and Vitis vinifera which are wine grapes. But if you take a Vitis Lambrusca, that's right, isn't it? Um, uh, rootstock, I'm just questioning myself after I said that. I might've put like an extra consonant in there. Um, <laughs> give me a second, it'll come back, it'll flip back. But basically, let's say table grapes. If you take the rootstock of, the, of that type and you graft the vine onto the rootstock, they'll grow, it will grow together. And then you plant that. And so you have the wine growing vine yep. grafted onto this other type of rootstock, which is resilient to this pest called phylloxera. But there are other types of pests and stuff that, that, can, that can be detrimental too. So you can actually choose very specifically, like what type of, um, what type of rootstock you want based on like what's in your vineyard like if you know for instance even that like this vineyard um is low in a certain type of nutrient or you know so you can actually choose these things and then have the vine grafted onto it and then you plant it does that make sense wow yes right that's, it's yeah. kind of cool that's insane so i i, I can't believe there was a, a it was like a wine pandemic it was that, kind of a that, wine that's, pandemic that's yeah you want to hear this is the like the, the, the cliff note version of this but you know what was so funny is um basically like we the american wine growing almost like wiped out all of european wine growing because we were like hey let's share our stuff like we'll send you some of our so and it had it started here uh, um, and then it almost wiped out all of european oh growing. great it, it affected us too but basically like yeah so, but, but, but outcome is we learned and we, and we, we fixed this thing together, right? So what a novel concept. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's very rare that vines are, they, they'll say like their own rooted, I mean, they have their own, their own the natural rootstock. It does exist for sure, but it's much, much, much more rare to be own rooted these days. Own rooted. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And there are certain types of soils that um, 
aren't that make it harder for phylloxera like sandy soils are difficult for them so some like in regions with a lot of sand they can still do it um but anyway it's it's pretty rare phylloxera phylloxera am i saying it right how do you spell that f it's a, it's like a p oh it's a ph p h y l l o e x e r a oh oof I had to write it as I was saying it, just to make sure. That's one of those questions that they ask on the spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, wouldn't you be so upset? You're like, man. Oh. You want to hear a good spelling bee story? Of course I do. OK. So let me take you back to fifth grade. OK. Um, I was in the fifth grade spelling bee. I get the word rapping. Rapping. Vanessa is wrapping a gift. And I get up there and I'm like, rapping, R-A-P-P-I-N-G, rapping. And they're like, eh. <laughs> it's a word. I mean, you no. weren't wrong. It was just like the wrong. <sighs> and I was, but I was so confident too, like, yeah. Yeah, so you didn't win as the... Yeah, it was, it was out, obviously. It was really, really brutal, because I, I I was very confident in my spelling ability. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, there you go. So, Phylloxera, right. P-H-Y-L-L-O-X-E-R-A. Yeah, Phylloxera. Phylloxera, yeah. Use it in, now use it in a sentence. Yeah. Um, Phylloxera is um, one of was one of the worst vine pandemics in the history of vine growing. I don't know. Use we almost sense. wiped out all of Europe's wines. Yeah. So oh, hey, cool, great. So you know what happened though, which is actually so there was actually a pretty bad outbreak in Napa in like the seventies and eighties, mm -hmm. and uh, sort of again some some of these things that happen sometimes end up having a, a, a happy outcome. And one was that something else to consider in terms of planting is um, row direction. So how it's situated towards the sun. Um, oh. If you think about it, um, the, you know, the way that the sun is rising and setting over your vineyard is gonna really have a difference on how those grapes ripen and maybe all this, this side is only getting the intense sunlight and this side is shaded. Um, and so it actually gave people, the point is, people were like, I have to replant yeah. on different rootstock. But it actually gave these growers the opportunity to look at what they had always done and say like, is this actually the best way? And a lot of people realize that it wasn't, you know, that situating vineyards in, in the rows in different directions in terms of sunlight actually helped quality. Because you know, very traditionally in, in many wine regions, but in Napa, you can see this driving up as, you know, people either would just plant them like parallel or perpendicular to the road. But that right. just did look beautiful, right? But ah. that may not actually be the best for quality um, and other things they can do, you know, in terms of how they, what we call training and trellising, which is how you situate the, set the wine, the, the vine up for success in its growth, you know, in terms of you can use wires, stakes, different kinds of things to, to help it. Um, anyway, point was it actually ended up sort of being good for right. the quality of Napa because people took a fresh look at, at how they were doing things and, and made changes. Right, which is which is actually wonderful, and you know, maybe we could learn a thing or two about that um, <laughs> going through what we're going through in the world. But that's that is actually really amazing. I can't believe like, yeah, that. But it makes a lot of sense to me now. How the direction that the grape is actually facing yeah. really m makes a huge right. difference. Right, and so now they're, they they allow them to be more kind of scientific about like. Where is the, you know, that during the hottest part of the day, what part of this vine is it going to, you know, and it gave people the opportunity to do things like, um, we say like op open up the canopy. So let's say maybe you take it and rather than having, you, you know, one line with everything straight up and down, they would actually take the, the, the canopy, the foliage and kind of 
position them like this in a Y so that it was kind of opening it up that so that like, the direct sunlight would, would be hitting like the center of the canopy mm -hmm. rather than just the top. So you kind of spread it out so you get better, actually mm -hmm. better, better exposure to the sun, but then you can also control how much sunlight is hitting the clusters. Um, and, because what you want really for, for quality uh, on wine grapes, um, again, it depends on the vintage, et cetera. Some things or decisions will be made differently, but what, what they call dappled sunlight. So you want this kind of soft yeah. sunlight that's, that has interspersing of foliage, but not mm -hmm. full and not too much because you too much shading is not going to get right. Too much opening, it's going to get too right. Now, having said that, there are vintages, let's say like a very cool vintage where it's not ripening, where they'll make a decision say like, we're going to open up the canopy, meaning they're going to go and actually pull leaves to, yeah. to increase it, you know, or opposite. If it's like a very warm vintage, sometimes they'll sort of encourage the canopy or they'll have the canopy almost like flop over rather than train it straight up or like this, they'll encourage it to actually flop over the vines and, and sort of protect it from, from too much sunlight and ripeness. I told you, I like this, is, I don't, I love this. Like I, this is just so fascinating to me. That's no, it, it's amazing. Um, and I, we actually have some questions. Okay. And I am not a grower just for the record. So right. I, do, I do not know everything. I just know I love it and it's fascinating. You do know, you know a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I got a question here okay. and it's from Maddie. How's it going, Maddie? Uh, does the grafting have anything to do with manipulating plant genetics? This is super interesting. No, no, not, no, not really. It's really just deciding what rootstock you want will be best for that soil. Um, okay. Yeah. And what's interesting though, I didn't mention this, is it, um, it also provides the opportunity. You can actually, so you can graft the vine, grow it, and then let's say like, oh, I was growing um, Merlot, but yeah. I want to, now I want to grow Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't actually have to start from scratch. I could literally graft a new vine onto that established rootstock and wow. change change the variety in the vineyard. It's crazy, okay. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. Or just plant a new vine. Let's say like your vine gets, it gets a disease or it's just really old and it's not producing much or whatever. You can keep that old established rootstock and you want those roots to be really deep, right? So they have access to water and the vine is strong um, and just put a new vine on it. Amazing. Okay. Um, uh, how about how about Cody here? What's up, Cody? Um, this do you, this question. <clears throat> when splicing the plants, does the part that's being connected to the host gain anything besides nutrients? Like, does it change the plant's DNA? Whoa. Not DNA. I think in grafting, right? Is that like when grafting it? Um, no, it won't change the DNA. It, the, the vine is what it is. It's just gives it the opportunity to be on this different rootstock, which would, would be stronger. So it doesn't actually, it, yeah. Okay, cool. I love these questions. Fascinating. Good, good questions. <laughs> um, what are you drinking there? Water? I just have a sip of water. <laughs> I'm going to go back to wine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, what else was here? Did, did I miss something? Um, did Thomas Jefferson try to have his own vineyard? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think his vineyard kept getting wiped out by phylloxera. <laughs> yes. Ah. <sighs> Even Jeff like, yeah, you, you, like, these people know some stuff. This is, I'm impressed. Good, right? Yeah. Phylloxera. Jefferson couldn't prevent the phylloxera. All right. Um, are the grapes sweet when they taste them to see if they are ready for harvest? Yeah. So, the, so you're looking for, um, again, that balance of sugar, what we call, if you want to sound wine geeky, sugar accumulation in the grape, um, but also in relation to, to acidity. So they're looking for that balance of it not being overly ripe or, uh, or dehydrated, but good sugar accumulation, but not 
so far that the, because the acid will continue to decline. If you think about like anything, like a peach tree, you know, like mm -hmm. if you pick a peach early, it's going to be very tart because it hasn't had the time to accumulate the sugar or you, the longer you wait it, the more sugar it's going to accumulate, the riper it's going to get. But then you wait too long and that doesn't taste good either, right? So it's picking it, finding the, just the right opportunity to, to, to pick. Because you only, and it's, it's, think about this, like you only get to decide that once, right? So yeah. the, the, the pick date, the date of harvest is like, you mess that up. You have to wait till next year to try that again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the next vintage. So it's a it's a it's a it's a big decision, and there's a lot of factors that that go into it. Okay, cool. Um, some but, what was I was gonna, and sometimes sometimes though, Mother Nature will sort of force this upon you. You know. Oh. So, so I remember um, one of the wineries that 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 I worked at. Um, uh, it was in '09. Um, there was a big rainstorm coming during harvest. Like, you know, we knew this was happening. And, yeah. and so lots of people had to make this decision, like, well, and it was kind of too, it was kind of too early, you know, for, for a lot of places to be harvesting. It's like, well, if we wait, this could be very bad because like rain during harvest or harvest time, I should say. So in the fall, uh, when the fruit has set, can, can, it can um, encourage diseases like mildew, um, so, so that's not good. Um, but then also it can actually sort of dilute the flavors of Ooh. the grape itself if you get rain at harvest around yeah. harvest. So, you know, in some cases, in that case, like some people were like, okay, well, I'm just picking because I'm not going to risk it, right? Yeah. And then some people are like, I'm going to wait it out. I may make less wine this year, but I'm going to wait for the grapes to get ripe. So sometimes it's, you know... It's it's not as much as you're in your control as you want, and you just oh, have to going have through that. Oh, I can't imagine going through the whole growing process, and then you get to harvest, and you have a giant storm that just destroy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta get up there for a harvest. Oh yeah, I haven't done that, and I really need to like see it in person. So I've um I've worked for wineries before, and I will say harvesting is really hard <laughs> it's fun for like an hour and then <laughs> like wow this is tough this it's really hard work but it, but everyone should do, should should do it and see what goes into it you know um because you know everything i mean there are mechanical har harvesters now but a lot of them you're just still done by hand um wow, that's really cool. so yeah you could harvest you could go sort the grapes on the sorting line I would I, I, pump I, I, overs in the tank. I gotta see. I gotta be. I, yeah, I gotta. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you should. So, there are yeah. plenty of places that would love to have a uh, harvest intern. So you just let me know. A harvest intern. I. <laughs> yes. yes. Thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Okay. Well, yeah. Maybe for like an hour. Do they do? do yeah. No. Everyone. Ever. It's really. It, it's. It's fun. I, I'm just saying. It's. It's hard. It's hard work. Yeah. It's fun. Um, and you have to get up really early. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah most, <laughs> most vineyards are picked like sometimes at night, um, uh, or very, very early in the morning because it's cooler. It's better for the workers, but it's better for the fruit if you're harvesting when it's cool because, you know, chemical reactions happen faster the warmer it is. So, like, you don't want the fruit to be like super hot and then it's going to like start fermenting before, you, like, in, in the, on the way to the winery or whatever. So, anyway. So you have to get up at dawn. Okay, cool. And it's cold, at least enough. It's super cold. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe not. Maybe I'll, well, I would do it for a day. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> by the way, thanks to um, Robert for the Jefferson question and to Shauna for the sweetness of the grapes question. Um, and I think, oh yeah, Kira, I, um, and this is a great little question here to kind of tie it all together here. It, it's when in the year does harvesting happen? And so, no, good. That's a great question. So it happens in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we, d it depends on, um, again, the vintage, because some vintages are warmer or cooler. So the date can, you know, can get moved around and, and entire regions aren't necessarily picked at the same time. Kind of depends on the style you, that you're growing that you want depends on the varieties that you have planted in terms of when they ripen. Um, something like like 
I'll just use again Napa Valley or the North Coast as an example is, you know, we do make sparkling wine here. And we've talked about this, like you want your base wine of the sparkling wine to be like high in acidity. So they'll start picking, you know, the grapes for sparkling wine sometimes like in August, but then some Cabernet Sauvignon will stay on the vine into, you know, October um, or in certain vintages even later. So it just, it just, um, it depends on the type of variety and vintage, but the, 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 the fall basically is, cool. is harvest. Got it. Okay. Yeah. If you so, want to really geek out, there's like ice wine, which is harvested like in the winter, but that's just the very specific style. So, whoa. Just, yeah. Ice wine. Yeah. So it's like, actually like grapes that have frozen on the vine. Okay. Right. It's very popular in, um, not popular, it's regions that are known for this. Germany makes a lot of ice wine, Austria, Canada. Canada. Canada, happy Canada day. Mm -hmm. Today is Canada day. I didn't so know that. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, cheers to our Canadians <laughs> that are watching right now. Happy yeah, Canada. cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. July 1st, Canada day. I know. Love it. And I know, because I, um, I um, two years ago today, I ate at uh, the World Showcase in Epcot in Canada, not in Canada, Canada, but in Epcot. I ate at the steakhouse. That's the Canadian steakhouse and, and on on uh, Canada Day. I was like, this is amazing. I love it. Yeah. And they have ice wine at um, the, yeah. Ep at the Epcot uh, Food and Wine Festival. Oh. Every year they oh, have they have ice wine at that festival in the Canada booth. Yeah, no, ice wine is delicious. It's very, it can be very expensive because um, it you have to squish a lot of grapes to get enough, you know, liquid out of these frozen. But also think about it when we're talking about harvest decisions, like it's very risky to leave because yeah. you could leave it on in hopes of ice wine, but then you just have like, you know, it, you don't get the right weather. It doesn't freeze. You have disease, you know, the birds come and eat. It's, it's, it's very risky. So it can be very expensive, but very delicious. Oof. Yeah. 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 Ice wine in Canada. Um, um, Harabi says it's, oh, it's also in Germany in Epcot too. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that, that, that. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ice wine. Okay. Well, I feel like, um, I feel like I talked a lot today, but I hope that that was interesting. It was really interesting. Okay. No, it was real great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love this. Oh, RJ, RJ loves ice wine. What's up, RJ? Hi. Um, cool. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Wine Wednesday. Yeah. I've been looking I... forward to this last Wednesday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of how I've lived through the uh, through the uh, quarantine. Yeah. 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 From Wednesday oh. to Wednesday. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I'm sure you want to right. stay on and chat with uh, with your peeps, but yep. I, I always love joining you. Best. Thank you for all of your knowledge. My pleasure. Well, we learn. We learn uh, like so much. This is um, you know because we we get a we get our own masterclass every week. It's pretty. <laughs> nice. My pleasure. All right. Thanks. Well, I, I have some Cabernet to drink, so I'm gonna. Me too. <laughs> All righty. All right, Max, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, wow, so good. Uh, how much did you learn tonight? Right? Uh, yeah. D d crazy amount. Crazy amount. So now we know we got we to gotta grow our wine on the hillside, right? So let's 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 um we got grow wine on the hillside, cause the but the, the, the sun and the, the temperature the, and the don't the drainage and the frost and the I'm just gonna have some wine on the balcony. Let's go. Let me talk to you guys. <laughs> um. Oh, what am I doing? I've got to pour it first. What am I doing going outside without pouring the wine? <laughs> what, what is going on? <laughs> we can't do that. 
Um, by the way, guys, this Martin Ray um, is uh, is I, I would say this is a steal um, because the price point it's at is kind of insane. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, grafting, right, Cody? Isn't that insane? Got to grow it on a on a on a grade. She's yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, okay. You guys just talk to yourselves for like a second, and I'll be right back. Okay, hi, hi. So, okay. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's good. All right, let's go. We're going out. Okay. Oh, the door's locked. Here we go. Oh, that's a little bright. It's a little bright. It's a little, a little bright. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Did I shut it? Yep. Okay. Hello, guys. How's it going? Wine Wednesday. Cabernet Sauvignon. So good. So it is so good. Um, how are you all doing? RJ, you're making ramen for dinner tonight? Nice. Um, <clears throat> hey, Didi, did, did I start Wine Wednesday before Trivia Tuesday, or was it in the same week? I have no idea. I have to scroll back in the videos. I, I don't know. I don't know when that was. I can't. I can't remember. This is. So this is one of those wines. Super dry. It's a cab. It's really oaky, and you really feel it all up in here. You know, like this face. Ah, uh, good face. Um, yeah, that's where you really feel it, uh, and it's it's uh, delicious, and the price is um. Honestly, kind of amazing for this. Uh, for this, it's insane. All right. <clears throat> um, what is what is um, what is this pipe dream, Maddie? Talking to Cody about wanting a mini vineyard in in Thailand and ruin a lone little wine booth in in the Chiang Mai market. You think you found your calling? There you go. And and and. <laughs> I love this. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh man, it's so good. Plus a lot of hills. You gotta you gotta do that. You gotta do it. You wanna be a wine intern? Who wants to be a wine intern? Anybody? Oh, Shauna, you know what? It's so true. You gotta get that teeth whitening after after you drink one of these. Wait, let me, let me check this out. Hold on a second. Uh, is it purple yet? You know when I really, you know when I really need the teeth whitener after a wine is after like a Zin? Cause it's like so purple and the fruit is like really bursting out. Um, that's what I'm, that's, yeah. Oh yeah. But this'll, this'll, mm, this'll do it. Look, look at that color. Oh, that's beautiful, right? That's a beautiful. Um, you know, Janelle, 
I love that you look forward to this because we get to hang. Isn't it cool? <clears throat> it's great. That's so good. Hey, Kathy. Oh, feel good movies. Singing in the rain and any. Yeah, I mean, that'll make you feel good. Right? Kira, I'm not. No, no straw. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, that you guys are, are all hanging here. Uh, and I, I uh, thanks to, um, of course, Heavenly Imaginings, Amanda, for uh, being such a great moderator. I love it. Um, Robert, what is my favorite wine food pairings? Well, you know, I got to say, like, something like, um, something like a cab like this would obviously go well with like a, a good old steak. Um, yes, this is a good red meat sort of wine. Sort of like if you look at my Instagram today, you can see the thing I ate at Le Cellier two years ago. Um, th this would, that's what I would eat with this. Um, a Zin would be more like uh, good with barbecue food. Yeah, barbecue food. If you're having spicy food, I would go with something like a, a a white, probably. You know, I think we a, we we did a remember when we did the um. Which which one did we have that would go really well with the with a with spicy food? I think it was like last week. I forget what was it last week? That we, was it Gergich, or was it the um. can't remember. I can't remember now. Also with the sake, remember that? There you go. Spicy food is a sweet wine. It was the, um, ah, it, oh, Maddie, it was the, oh man, it had a crazy long, like weird name. Ah, I can't remember now. It was like two weeks ago. It was pretty sweet. Hey, Jansen, what's up, buddy? Any new Disney news? Um, no, actually nothing. Yeah. Robert, you were a Disneyland cast member 86 to 91, and you know something fun about the Tahitian Terrace. The waterfall was a stage entrance. So that waterfall, but it was a real waterfall? So cool. Shawnee just had some steak with Pinot. Love it. Le Cellier. Robert, how was that whiskey flight at, at Le Cellier? Because I didn't I didn't do that. I just had wine there. How was that? Um Adela, um admire oh gosh, thank you so much. Um Adela, I appreciate that. Um admire transparency and uh honestly through this COVID situation. Yes, thank you, thank you. Stay home, wear your masks. Thank you. It, it, Maddie, it was something like that. Um, slightly off topic, Missy, what, what's up? What, what are you talking about, Michelle, here? What, what, slightly off topic, have you been to Lazy Dog Cafe, PB&J Burger? No, I haven't been. <laughs> Someone else does that. Oh, you know who else does that? Um, the ESPN club at Disney World at the boardwalk has one of those. I oh, wonder, uh, yeah. Kristen, what's up? I look forward to Wine Wednesday and I don't even drink. How sad is my life? No, it's not sad. We just hang in and having a good time. Oh, Gert, Gert, Gertz, 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 Triminer, that's the sweet wine name. No, but I'm thinking of something different. So fancy alcoholic Shiraz from Eden. Like, look at you, Amanda. Good job. Robert, sometimes Minnie would appear from behind there. They would control the water flow. I love this. PB&J Burger. OK, I love it. What's up, Epic Nani Show? They wanted to say hey, too, Epic Nani Show. Thank you so much. Too young for one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, 
um, a couple crown, oh, crown royals and Canadian clubs. Oh, sweet. See, that sounds good. Top three favorite burgers ever? During a live stream, I'm just gonna run your guess it's wine smells like cat pee and a cat peed. Oh, Dee Dee. I don't. <laughs> Which wine? We didn't actually have a wine that was cat pee, right? Someone was saying that there are wines where people will describe it as that. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's so gross, man. Thank you for sharing that beautiful story. <laughs> oh, gosh. I need to figure out what wine this was, this sweet, this old sweet wine. <laughs> Tiffany, you had a Chardonnay that smelled like cat pee. There it is. There, there it is. Okay, wait. Hold on a second. I gotta. I hold on. I gotta. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. 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 Okay. Guys, it, I was going to drive me crazy if I didn't figure out what it was. So I went into my little um, recycling little thing. It's this guy. Dr. Polly Bergweiler. 2016 Wellner Son Riesling Spots. That word. Remember this word? Remember we were trying to pronounce that word? It's this one. So this is obviously empty. Um, but this is the one. <laughs> this is this is the one um, that we that I was trying to remember. This is the one that would be good with spicy food. Because this was really sweet. And and um the truth here. This one took me like, a, oh gosh, a long time to get through because um, it was so sweet. I would have like a, literally a sip maybe for like dessert occasionally, but I, I was not, I, I couldn't do it um, like a full on glass. Like I could do reds and I know what you're talking about there. It, 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 like what, what, what <laughs> Tiffany said right there. I usually am always sticking to reds too, um, but it has been nice to kind of explore some other options. Um, so that's been fun, but like, yeah, this is it. Cool, we, we, we whew, mystery solved. Another storm in New York, mom? Thunder and lightning in New York, all right. Well, when's the last time we had a thunderstorm? Anna, when have we ever had a thunderstorm over here at Southern California? Can you think? Where are my SoCal people? Anna, where's Michelle? Yeah, we, we haven't had a, a thunderstorm in, in uh, Maddie. Yeah, we haven't had a thunderstorm. <laughs> oh, man, we haven't had one in, I don't even know. I think the last time it thundered, I like tweeted about it because we haven't heard thunder and oh, <laughs> Maddie, we said the same thing. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh gosh, it's so true though, because that's just, it doesn't happen here. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> Can't believe it. we tweeted it. It's ridiculous. 
Ah, oh, jeez. It's like whenever there's an earthquake, we, we go right to Twitter. That's how you always know, like, oh, we just, uh, we just had a, we just had an earthquake, didn't we? And we've been having um, quite a, we've had a couple earthquakes lately, right? Not fun. So, yeah. Eight years, you never felt an earthquake, mate? <sighs> yeah. um, we've had, what, two during quarantine that I've felt. Yeah, two during quarantine, those are fun. <laughs> those are good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. Um, are we? Um, are you guys? Are you? Uh, it thundered near in LA in December, Jonelle. Really? Maybe December. That sounds right. Um. I gonna say? Oh, you guys are actually gonna get another video from me this week, like a video, a video, not just a live one. So that'll be fun. So that'll come out tomorrow or uh, Friday. So um, yeah. Yep, Shauna, tacos. Tacos are happening. Um, tonight, actually, taco, taco salad. It's good. Oh, hey, Tiffany Lopez, you're late. Yeah, you see it soon. It's all good. Um, uh, tacos, rewind. Oh, um, Anna, what's the video about? Froze. <laughs> We got a, a froze for the fourth weekend. I had a little random like fun and made froze. Um, like the most basic, simple ever. I literally just poured some wine in, a, in some in, 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 you know, an ice tray and I froze it and then blended it and it was great. But oh, I made a whole video about it, so it's all good. Um, it's gonna be fun. Yep, I told you the video. Um, are we getting any more Max and Max's dad music videos? Oh, maybe. We have fun doing those. Yeah. Yeah. Taco salad. And steak. Hmm. Yeah, my dad and I, um, we would love to do that again. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just scrolling back up. I think I missed some commentary. Oh, Kira, in Scotland, people complain about the rain whilst folk are having thunderstorms when there's earthquakes. Scotland is tame weather. I love Scotland. You're going to have that mist going on all the time in Scotland. Yeah. Epic Nani Show is food and wine happening. Um, my mom loves it and we watch when you attend. Oh. They are doing a modified sort of food and wine festival this year at Disney World. That's really loud. Hold on a second. Who's flying like that? Sounds really loud. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I don't know what that thing is, but
to get back to that question. A weird looking. Um, food and wine. Oh, Melissa, hey, what's up? I miss it. Yeah. So, um, Epcot Food and Wine Festival, they're doing some sort of modified version. Um, yes, um, hurrah, babe. Uh, it does look like a hybrid between food and wine and flower and garden. Uh, it's so it's like a little version of it, but it's in Disney World, and so I'm not going to be there. So there will be no food and wine for me this year, sadly. Um, cause, uh, it's in Florida and I'm not going to Florida. Heck no. <clears throat> Pretty much never leaving like, you know, here. <laughs> That's right, Didi. I do my own food and wine at home. Do I think Disney World will really open, Kristen? I do. I think Florida's got just no rules and they are just doing it. They are just doing it. I, 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 it's uh, the, uh, uh, yes, COVID-19 is literally worse than ever in, well, in, t in the whole country, actually, um, but specifically in places like Florida, California, Texas. Um, but Florida is, uh, you know, the problem is that I don't see their governor um, restricting anything. In fact, he was like, Florida's governor was like, we're not, uh, we're not gonna, you know, rewind anything. We're not closing anything back up. Nope. <laughs> so that's their governor. And then you have our governor here in California, who today is like, um, we need to uh, close up the uh, restaurants for indoor dining again. So, so there you go. Florida's crazy. Now you look at New York, where my family is, and they completely flatten the curve. It's amazing. Since restaurants are closing for dining, how is that going to affect downtown Disney? Yeah, I don't know. No idea. Hey, Maddie, I'm cool too. It's with this quarantine masks, we got live streams. We'll we'll do. You know what, Isabel? Food and wine, and do it at home. I'm I I am feeling that. Sounds good. Not playing. Oh, your governor in Texas. Yeah, he's something too. <laughs> Yeah, wineries are closing in 19 counties in California now, Shauna. But you know, Napa and Sonoma are not closing, which I found very interesting, which, which you know, Vanessa said there too. I don't, it's very interesting because like anyone from here can go visit there, spread the virus there, and then you, well, what happens to, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Your governor closed all the bars and limited dining between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. Oh, is that Florida? <clears throat> yeah, you gotta take people's drinks away, I know. Whoa, Japan! Hello, Fruit 55 from Japan. You know, Tokyo Disneyland open. Jansen, can you do the toast pick? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I can do that. Um, is this where I toast you guys and you take a picture of the screen? All right, let's do it. How do I look? Here we go. Cheers. <laughs> All right, we are cheersing. Cheers, cheers, cheers. If you took a picture, awesome. Mm -hmm. If you took a picture, tag me. Really good. <clears throat> Ow. 
Allison, you have to go back to work at Disney Store next week. Oh my gosh. Man. Good luck. I am thinking of you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tiffany, yeah, you can get wine from Wine Axis. That's all I need, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> right? Um, Amber, we are far away, but love visiting Anaheim. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the whole year is different, Robert. Halloween and holiday themed ye old cheesy pub trivia. Oh, you know it'll happen. And just be, I, even if quarantine ends, we're gonna keep that going because <clears throat> I have a good time. Oh, Jonelle. Jonelle, thinking of you. So happy that you're here with the Cheesy Pop fam. It's always good hanging with the Cheesy Pop fam. <clears throat> um, so, Next week, I'm 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 a little up in the air on what's going to happen with Wine Wednesday. Um, I have to I have to figure out what I want to do next week because I know that we, I I might have some scheduling issues. Not with me, I'm not going anywhere. Um, but we're going to figure some stuff out next week. So I want to tell you guys that there'll be Wine Wednesday, but um, might not be with my with like Vanessa next week. So I'm just trying to figure it out. Uh, so. I want to let you guys know that Trivia Tuesday would be normal. And then whatever else we're doing. <laughs> How about this? I know you guys have been asking for it. Cooking. <clears throat> Cooking. Maybe I'll try to do that next week as well. Try to make that happen. Either next week or the week. Out. Yeah, we got to do that. Um, Eduardo, oh yeah. Yeah, I'll hit up Eduardo too. He'd be a good one to get back, yeah. <clears throat> but I know a lot of you guys want me to cook some stuff, so I think it'd be fun to do that. <clears throat> a recipe in advance you could cook with me? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I mean, maybe one of these wine Wednesdays would do a little double feature with that. Could do a little like wine and cooking. Who knows? I don't know. Or is it on a separate day? Who knows? <clears throat> Boom. We'll, 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 we'll make it happen. Sake and make sushi rolls. Oh, Anna, you, I mean, I've never done that. That would be, that's a challenge. <laughs> Oh man, um, big challenge. <clears throat> That'd be fun. Um, okay, it's not difficult. Amazon has cheap sushi kits. What? All right, maybe this is something we can do. Who knows? <clears throat> that could be fun. All right, I love this. Tacos Dorados, all oh, deep fried tacos, money crystals. All right, guys, now you just. I'm so hungry. I legit do have to actually go like. <clears throat> Eat here in a second. Um, I'm also losing my voice. What is what is that all about? <clears throat> what what is that? If you took a little picture of the toast, um, send it to me on uh, Instagram. That would be great. And um, I will uh, see you guys uh, later on Instagram. Yeah. I'm sure I'll post another story or something tonight. Um, <clears throat> And get ready for the uh, Frosé video. Oh, you guys are the only ones that know. You're the only ones that know. Oh, Marie, you posted on your story already? Sweet. 
I love it. <clears throat> Have a good night, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie. <laughs> okay. Okay, you know what, Maddie? Okay. <laughs> Amazon sushi kit right here. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. If you got a link to that, I will um <clears throat> send me that uh, uh, in a message too. Oh, oh no, it looks like specifically added. Thank you. <laughs> Jonelle, more videos with my dad? You'll sponsor them? Okay. All right, I'll talk to my dad about that too. Yeah. <laughs> Just search it, you're lazy. <laughs> oh, God. All right. All right. Prime will deliver by Tuesday. All right, sweet. All right. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. You know what? My battery literally says 2%, so it's kind of worked out. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers to you guys. Happy Canada Day. Happy 4th. And uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Oh, 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 Anna, for rice. Now go eat. That's funny. Thank you. <laughs>